दिस इज अक्षय गारकेल पार्टनर एंड लीडर विद इन साइबर विद ग्रैंड थाउंटेन भारत एंड आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक सी एक्स न्यूज एसेंशली टू गिव अस दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी इन यू नो रनिंग दिस पैनल ऑन ओ टी एंड आई टी कन्वर्जेंस ऑफकोर्स सिक्योरिटी विथ दी जीरो ट्रस्ट फ्रेमवर्क यू नो एज वीव सीन टूडे द वर्ल्ड हैज यू नो गोइंग थ्रू डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन मोस्ट ऑफ द स्पेसिस मोस्ट ऑफ द बिजनेसिस Uh, which include both the business government and also the entities of critical infrastructure uh, and uh, uh, critical importance to infrastructure uh, you know we've also seen some of the uh, you know uh, success stories in terms of uh, convenience speed accuracy uh, transparency of operations and of course the transactions uh, and you know well we seen an era where uh, you know mechanics essentially in the form of for example uh, steam power machines uh to throughout the industrial revolution days in the 18th century to today's uh industry 4.0 and of course the web 3.0 uh we've also seen some of the solutions through advanced uh topics like iot connected devices uh smart uh, manufacturing and so on and so forth which are actually fueling the industrial growth today right so from that perspective uh you know organizations uh, who are using operational technology extensively have seen a value in terms of you know kind of converging both uh, information technology and operational technology together to kind of fuel the mass digitalization wave that we so called in a, in you know in the in the uh, global landscape today uh, uh, you know we've seen that it systems typically uh, support the data centric computing way whereas the ot systems help in monitoring and controlling the device performances and so forth right uh, we've also kind of seen that you know uh for example if you take uh, some of the industrial examples for example uh, oil and gas companies uh, basically enable a fair bit of operational technology for uh, you know monitoring the data remotely optimizing the damage assessments or even looking at the inventory monitoring and things like that we've seen in the medical industry uh, we've seen uh, sharing of patients information in real time through biomedical devices converting into information technology and so on and so forth right so fair bit of uh, advantages of basically looking at the convergence but while we talk about the advantages of course it comes with its own fair share of risk and those risk essentially what we are here to discuss are the cyber security risk uh, from a cyber security perspective you know we've seen organizations who've been taking very active efforts uh, in terms of ensuring business continuity uh, cyber attacks today have actually grown uh more from from you know have the you know we've seen the threat landscape with the more complexities today uh the threat actors are also getting more and more sophisticated uh, we've seen fair bit of infiltration and sabotage in operations whether it is it or ot right uh for some examples we saw the colonial pipeline ransomware issue uh, we saw the mumbai power grid issue uh, stuxnet is obviously a uh, very famous one right so with all of that uh and of course uh, the other scare is the uh, data breach from a personal identifiable information perspective as well so when we see all of that of course you know we look at the context of uh, zero trust how does really the zero trust framework you know uh, come into picture how does the zero trust framework really bring in the uh, security controls uh, which essentially will be important to protect this convergence uh and you know that is what we are here today to kind of discuss and uh, i'd like to invite my first panelist uh, amrish uh, to kind of share a perspective and uh, amrish thanks for joining in uh, you know uh, you know when you look at some kind of my question to you amrish is that when you look at some kind of modern manufacturing uh, especially which entails a fair bit of automated assembly lines uh, which is you know kind of feeding into the design of the software or the inventory management and also supporting some of the advance uh, you know controls like rpa etc what is your opinion in terms of organizations really uh, trying to stitch all of these together uh, bringing them under a common security policy or a framework and then you know entailing both the components from it and ot as well and then you know kind of culminating it within the common framework so we'll be happy to hear your views on that thanks sir and welcome everyone so i'll just start with uh, see oh, ot technology has been existing for many years because the manufacturer has been leveraging this and ot is all about uh, collection of hardware and software 
managing the industrial systems, right? Now the problem in the OT world has been and because uh, the, the way the IT system has grown in the uh, perspective of uh, versions, upgrade, update, etc. That doesn't happen in OT world. OK, the so major problem in the OT system is the they are running on the very legacy operating systems. First thing. Second thing, all the policies which you design for the IT world doesn't apply there. So there is a problem of visibility. OK, third thing is that you cannot upgrade them very quickly because there are a lot of dependency on OEMs. I OEMs and not get the pace with the outside world. So you have to depend on those OEMs and the OEMs will take their own sweet time. So that is the problem area. Now, as you rightly said, today uh, most of the organizations want to leverage the power of digital transformation. OK, why? Because there is a huge uh, business opportunity. OK, they want to leverage the digital technologies like cloud, you talked about RPA, you talked about IoT, you talked about smart manufacturing, etc., and data analytics because they have a bunch of data, but organizers don't know how to use that data. Okay, they have seen these technologies are helping the new US organizations. You talk about today the new e-commerce businesses, cloud kitchens, delivery, you see the supply chain, how they are using the new technologies. They have seen that they have used the new technology and where they are today. The business growth just see the business growth. Okay. But digital transformation means to every organization a different meaning. OK, some of the organizations feel that they, they are going to digitize, digitize their hard copy. They feel that they are into a digital transformation journey. OK, no. Majority of the organizations uh, probably they get confused and some of the organizations are. So today every organization at different stage of their digital transformation journey. OK, because uh, if you talk about old companies okay uh, they have been they have everything on on prem there is a reluctance to go to cloud they don't know what will happen etc right and now suddenly they see there is an opportunity because last two years they have seen power of digital technologies okay they have seen how the, this has transformed the entire world okay they are, that's why they started turning on to this journey now once you get on to this digital transformation journey you will face obvious challenges one is operational challenges second thing the skills third is the Cyber security challenges. OK, now suppose we want to take example of somebody want to trans migrate from on prem to the cloud. OK, challenges will be exponential. We got to use to ensure that assessment becomes very thorough. OK, the one is the operational assessment like talk about platform, talk about network, talk about ecosystem, talk about uh, database, where how they will work, etc. That are operational in nature, right? But as a security professional, we need to understand how the security ecosystem is going to work, how this is working on prem without compromising security. By looking at all angles from the regulatory and other aspects, if you are probably, if there is something applicable to you. Okay. So once you are transforming, you need to ensure that cyber security is integral part of that journey. Okay. Now take an example of, suppose some company is building a IoT product. OK, you need to ensure that you do the secu thorough security assessment from chip to cloud. OK, you have the firmware you need to do a security assessment of that firmware. Who is developing it? How this is being developed? Is there any open ports, etc.? Then you talk about mobile app, connectivity, infrastructure and website. You need to ensure that chip to cloud security assessment is done. Focus on defense in depth. OK, so focus on security by design. Ensure that whatever the processes you are building, People, process, and technology, they are complementing each other rather than they are working in silos. Whatever the good technology you implement, it will fail. OK, and. We all we all believe in zero trust, right? Someday uh, every organization will achieve that. So we need to be sure that whatever is little step we are taking today. OK, how this is going to converse to converse towards my zero trust journey. How this will add to that journey. OK, because they know single technology you implement and you will achieve the zero trust. It is a multi year project, right? So we need to think about it and make sure that your OT and IT network, there is an air gap because certain things you cannot remediate those risks in OT world because you know what the obvious reasons. So you need to build certain secondary controls, look at review because the visibility is the biggest problem in the OT world. We put a lot of focus on IT, but we forget about OT if you are handling the manufacturing work. 
So these are my initial thoughts. I'll look forward to hear from the other panelists. No, I think uh, brilliant thoughts and you know, uh, you spoke about operations assessment. You spoke about chip to cloud mobile apps. How do you basically look at the interfaces of the hardware with the mobile apps? Uh, of course, focus on defense and depth security by design and on the zero trust. So uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, th thank you so much for that, Amrish. Uh, with that, uh, I think, you know, uh, we also discussed about smart manufacturing. We discussed about uh, biomedical as an example, but I think uh, one of the examples uh, which uh, most of our audience would love to hear uh, would be on connected cars, right? And I think that's the most hot topic today. Uh, you talk about green energy, we are talking about EV. Uh, so that's another dimension of looking at the cars. But I think from a, uh, more from a technology uh, and OTIT convergence perspective, I think connected cars is a great example. And uh, my my you know uh, question here is to Inderjeet ji. Uh, you know uh, you know when you look at the connected cars, right? Of course, uh, it brings in a lot of advantages um, today. You know where we are able to access information on the fly during our mobility. But at the same time, and then of course, you know, making the cars a little smarter. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, there is obviously a kind of a, a risk associated with uh, having the connected cars. Uh, we've seen some examples in Germany as well, where certain cars have got hacked and you know, uh, kind of uh, made it accident prone. And these were a part of the test itself. But you know, scientists or maybe I would say the testers were actually successful in terms of compromising um, you know the car so from that perspective what are your views what are the cyber security controls and you know how do you apply those cyber security controls in the smart manufacturing uh, world uh, when you look at telemetry or infotainment or kind of plc equipments gearbox assemblies and so on and so forth so uh, thank you very much uh, thanks for having me here on the panel and really wonderful discussion on the zero trust and it and you know uh, the zero trust itself is like Trust no one, and that's what uh, the zero uh, trust starts with. And uh, when you look in from a convergence point of view, IT and OT, uh, what we always see is the east-west traffic, which is uh, you know amounting to almost 85 percent, which we are not monitoring through our firewalls. And it's only the northwest uh, west traffic traffic which we are all you know going about firewalls, IPS, IDS and you know all those uh, things which we have as a security solutions now with the convergence of iot coming in industrial iot devices now this has made the landscape so huge so vulnerable right so the ot networks today are equally vulnerable than we ever thought of earlier because while we talk of the air gap uh, those air gaps are really very difficult to clearly say that there's an air gap because when you have a IoT devices, you're connected to the cloud, okay? And it gives those kind of vulnerabilities. It's uh, kind of, you know, patch management, your app management, your uh, API integration, right? Sensor manipulations, everything is possible using that. Now, coming to the, the connected cars, because that's uh, one application with pretty interesting application. And it's a, a very software intensive uh, and very complex device and highly connected system. And if you look at the driverless car, when we talk of it, it's got so many sensors on board and there are almost 70 to 100 embedded microcontrollers on board running, you know, millions of lines of code. So it's no more a mechanical car, which we talk of, right? And whether it's your braking, your engine control, your steering, your airbags, your navigation system, they're all being controlled through different sensors and they're all radars. And to make it more interactive, you know, we have vehicle to vehicle communication, we have vehicle to infrastructure communication. These are all very vulnerable if you look at it, right? And and any hacker who's there can exploit these vulnerabilities sitting right anywhere in the any corner of the world. Say, for example, you have a connected car with the, the most uh, highest, you know, VIP, which can be hacked from anywhere across the world if it is, you know, connected to all these systems, right? And it actually increases the attack surface, which is very large. And the the broad uh, attack surface is like every component is connected. So if you're able to get into any one of the component, right, you're into the system. Say, for example, if you compromise the infotainment system, 
it can you know effectively uh, give the attack vector where you're able to control the in vehicle network all altogether right and once the hackers you know they gain a in vehicle access of the car they can control everything then you're just a mere dummy who's sitting like uh, on the on the on the steering and it can change the controls it can change the acceleration it can apply brakes locking unlocking the door and in fact i have like the example which i was telling you a vip if he is there and if this is a connected car they can lock the door and you cannot get out of it and this is one of the cases which happened where you know a vip was locked because uh, it, the car was been tracked through satellite right and the the it, uh, the security attacks are not just limited to the disclosure of information here right they effectively affect the safety of the passengers who are there and there are so many n number of examples what we have seen today where uh, the jeep was been taken over the internet like right then there was like the vehicle which i told you the vip itself was um, kind of uh, locked inside the car right then tesla infotainment system was contained uh, a four year old vulnerability it was having it was kind of a bigger challenge with their address so what do we really really need to do you need to have the complete you know understanding of the attack surface and you should also take care of the active and the passive attacks which can happen now there are different kind of active and passive attacks because now the, all the technologies which we talk of because you see uh, we have the radar technology we are putting the sensor technology we are putting iiot which are there we are having the 5g which is there and we also putting a cognitive intelligence onto it right so so that you know you are able to immediately take a uh, action you have the prescriptive maintenance you have the predictive maintenance everything of the technology perspective we talk of uh, in the in the uh, in the technology landscape it's all there so they give a huge active and passive attacks and that we need to take care of while we are you know uh, getting with the security part of the uh, connected cars where you can ensure a connected secure access secure storage you know secure keys secure diagnostics your key management becomes pretty important because it's a software key now the auditing and logging which are there so your tempering uh, protection your machine security so all those things become so very important when we talk of a connected car right so i'll stop here because uh, of the paucity of time i like other uh, speakers to speak sure. as well sure. you know, i just I'll, had I'll i just had uh, one one counter question to this in the gg before we move to the next one um and this is more on when you mentioned about the attack surface right one is to basically understand the anatomy of the in network of the car uh, is there anything that you would like to propose or suggest at the time when the car goes on the shop floors to basically look at the security by design aspects yes so uh, there are lots of auditing and and the privacy controls which are to be there right so that there is no vulnerability which is being injected whenever it goes for the maintenance right a small vulnerability into the car when it goes for maintenance it may not be evident at that particular point in time but can play havoc when it's on the highway running at 120 miles per hour right so right. those so in in effect the maintenance of the car becomes very important because that's a point where anybody can get into that vehicle so it's like just like getting into a data center just imagine that right so <laughs> if you give access to the data center so your complete thing is gone so it's a, it's a moving data center now right and uh, everything which is there has to be secured starting from your key management okay. so right. uh, the maintenance of the car becomes equally very important sure sure now interesting and interesting to see how cyber uh you know compromise to cyber postures can were actually compromising the uh you know uh, they were actually compromising businesses they were compromising the assets and now actually they're compromising human life uh, so you know very interesting to see that and i'll move to the next topic and i'll request uh, uh, this question to nitin parashar uh, so nitin uh, basically you know uh, if you could throw some light in terms of how zero trust policies could essentially help you know uh, better manage the security considerations of organizations uh, mostly in the telecom devices space 
uh, and of course in the age of a wide range of apps which are being curated so when you talk about telecom it's no longer voice it's all about value added services right so from that standpoint uh, you know how do you basically look at this convergence um, what are the security standards that you would recommend uh, more of a high level in terms of you know looking at whether it is any of the it assets or these are handsets uh, or for that matter even the core applications which kind of you know uh, you know uh, kind of control uh, the environment uh, both from the telecom side and also from the it side over to you nathan thanks thanks akshay uh, so um, hi all hi everyone so um, akshay i think uh, we all are moving we are talking about digital transformation we are moving to hybrid cloud infrastructure right uh, so with this digital transformation and cloud infrastructure that we are moving to uh, it is absolutely changing the way indus all the industries do business nowadays right so relying on those days when we used to rely on a official network perimeter those are gone now i mean if you talk about security if you talk about network uh, we need to adapt to cloud we need to adapt to mobile we need to adapt to every global need that is there right and every organization now is also adjusting to their business models where they are trying to offer services uh, to the customers with new digital experience with saas coming in picture right so they the need and want while also enabling a global workforce uh, this has uh, actually uh, has to be accelerated because digital transformation journey is now accelerated right so uh, organizations have thousands of i mean we all are connected globally from different places and that is how organizations have moved uh, from they are connecting from home computers it, it's outside your uh, own it departments control right you did talk about pii also uh, we never thought of thought about it earlier right uh, data privacy is now talk of the town of course resources are spread across uh, the globe so it, it becomes very difficult for everybody to quickly uh, you know connect quickly and then be secure also right so uh, because we have we have been relying on our traditional on premise infrastructure uh, employees now we have moved for em to employees home environment which are more vulnerable to compromise of course uh, putting the business at risk we need to understand that right uh, we also need to look at that things become more complicated now because many enterprises are currently operating with a patchwork of security solution and tools uh, with poor integration which is also leading to a lot of manual work manual task right they they lack uh, context they lack insight and our people are putting in a lot of manual efforts which is and now because the control is not effective there is a rise in data breach uh increase in global regulation have been predicting networks difficult so uh, i think it has to be a mix of uh, not just a handset or application uh, we have to look at probably a wider level where applications users and devices uh, all need fast and secure access to data so much that the entire industry of security and tools and architecture uh, has been built to protect, protect it right uh, so that's i think that's where zero trust when we talk about zero trust uh, uh, like somebody said trust trust nothing trust nobody i think that is what comes in picture because uh, if you talk about zero touch uh, it is not a technology for me it is a mindset it is a process uh, that we need to inculcate because that is the only way we will be able to prevent data breaches and contain lateral uh, movement using application micro segmentation because i think somebody mentioned about uh, getting on a possible possible lateral attack uh, so i think uh, when we talked about connected cards somebody getting into one segment and then easily able to you know uh, elevate the privilege and getting on to something which is lateral so we need to e uh, be capable to easily expand security protection across multiple computing we need to look at uh, you know containerized environments independent of underlying infrastructure we need to have a complete visibility to users devices components and of course workloads across environment identifying what is running and how are we enforcing the policies which are required we surely need to look at something uh, that helps us to continuously monitor detect uh and respond to signs of compromise uh, so continuous threat detection is uh, is very very important 
we need to have uh, organized uh, we need to ensure about uh, you know consistent user experience also because we can't really cop so while we need to look at zero trust and the security we can't really compromise on user experience because that is important uh, we need to look at reducing full time uh, manual hours and architectural complexity that we have uh, to a better unified security ar uh, architecture which makes life easy for everybody right so these are some benefits i think that zero trust brings brings in it definitely brings in enhance security uh, by using tools platforms that can include um, i am uh, that can include your multi factor authentication uh, xdrs uh, which can be used for uh, you know extensive detection detection and response uh, it also brings in i think a side benefit of it would be simplifying the security architecture and improved user experience because that is equally important and adapting to the remote work and cloud uh, adoption because everybody uh, during this pandemic i think has learned and will continue uh, this this model of course uh, might go on to hybrid we plan to work from offices also but we we need to understand what it has brought in at the table so i'm sure uh, this can bring a lot of uh, benefits to not just the telecom uh, but all the industries that are being there right i think you know fantastic points made uh, and thank you so much for that nitin uh, you spoke about not looking at the users and devices in isolation but doing a complete mix uh, and seeing you know how do you kind of work on the apps the users and the devices basically you know uh, collating together you spoke about micro segmentation and of course today if you look at uh, you know the uh, within india you look at the uh, you know unicorn club uh, you know there are a lot of micro segmentation organizations who are basically entering into the unicorn club so i wouldn't uh, you know uh, uh, agree more i mean i would definitely agree a lot uh, on what you just mentioned uh, then of course uh, some very good points on containerized environments uh, complete uh, visibility to users uh, in terms of user actions and what they've been doing uh, continuous threat detection reducing manual hours and getting unified security architecture across the board uh, cloud adoption in terms of adaptability just one counter question to that a very quick one and i'll just request 30 seconds of view from your end on that is uh, when you talk about continuous uh, user uh, threat detection uh, do you think uh, you know uh, the end user handsets also come under the purview of uh, end user detection uh, of course why not i mean with the way we are moving uh, with the way we are moving i mean we move on the road and we did talk about connected cars right so uh, why not i mean it does of course we need to look at that also okay all right thank you so much for that uh, i'll move to my next question and you know i'll uh, you know uh, request uh, you know uh, pradipta to kind of step in for this one and uh, pradipta my 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 question here is on critical infrastructure right so today uh, you know we've seen the entire globe kind of witnessing cyber attacks on critical infrastructure right from nuclear plants to power grids uh, and you know even transmission lines uh, we've also seen certain train networks also getting kind of hacked uh, you know so the, uh, and then of course uh, uh, you know while i do appreciate and understand that a uh, lot of countries uh, you know power grid corporations of lot of countries or the central authorities uh, from a, a electricity standpoint have been you know coming up with various uh, you know cyber security uh, guidelines uh, very recently in india as well the central electricity authority has also mandated some companies to have a dedicated team on cyber and also to kind of uh, have a mechanism in terms of a call tree or a mechanism to kind of handle these security incidents uh, so my question to you is you know what have really been the challenges for power companies today more so from an operational technology perspective uh, in terms of handling any cyber incidents if any uh, and of course you know what are the additional responsibilities you feel uh, you know uh, 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 has been entrusted by the government uh, on power companies to kind of protect the uh, operational technology assets especially during these incidents 
Yeah, thanks, Akshay, giving me this opportunity to take on my thought about uh, this uh, OT and IT and the, the critical infrastructure, what you're talking about, and, and also like, you know, the policy around and how we can control and protect those are our national critical infrastructure or the, the business critical in, in infrastructure in India and across the globe. So the point is the way we are moving towards the digitization. Today, the IT and OT is not into the different island. It is a single island we can talk about because the data, what we are going to be uh, utilizing or warehousing and or also that I and ML, the part of where we are enforcing those and to take maximum benefit of those data which is coming from that OT environment, whether it is the CNC, PLC, SCADA, control traffic, all those like, you know, there are a lot of in, lot of information, a lot of data been generated. So we are wanted to take those data like, you know, in the meaningful way to have that optimization of those, either it is a productivity side of it, cost optimization side of it. We need to implement very long time. It has been talked about. It is more of like, you know, the different island today. Today, the world is moving towards the digitization, uh, digital transformations where uh, this critical infrastructure become a part of our connected or networked or might be like, you know, more of uh, uh, integrated with the IT today. So the point is today, if you look into that business uh, as well as the government agencies are always faced uh, like, you know, spike of the global uh, cyber attacks during 2021 or might be in the 2022 it, it's it's happening like you know every every year it is that the graph is going, going high even though, even though for 2020 to 2021 if you see it is 11 percent especially i'm talking about the critical infrastructure the cyber attacks has been gone high in the 11 percent side of it having said that if you're looking about the incident of course the incident is gone uh, much beyond like you know uh, today some of the thing is reported some certain things are not been reported that is one of the challenges but however if you look into the commercial side of it more than five billion like you know dollar we have seen uh, like you know in the 2021 to be getting into like you know on those uh, critical infrastructure losses and and most of the cases if you see the critical infrastructure uh, the weakest link you can say whether it is a malware ransomware or might be the USB, usb access might be the vpn or might be the password which is the weakest password or might be the firewall policy which has been not configured appropriately. So these are these are the key where like you know key uh, key uh, points where we have seen most of the critical infrastructure been compromised. If I talk about certain major outages or major incident which has happened, I'll start from the recent which we have already highlighted up here the Cornell oil pipeline in the USA where the ransomware been attacked and in that place around eleven thousand gas stations been completely out of like you know out of operation so why it is it is because of like you know moral of if you can say about uh, there are there are group where they not only take out of the stolen stealing the data it is also they are wanted to Im impact those critical infrastructure that is one of the recent example on the 2021 and the similar if you can see the israel water system that is in 2020 it has been impacted completely on their ics systems so so if you talk about before that there is a taiwan state electricity board where the cpc corporations is attacked through the rdp it is a simple rdp has been exposed and it has been getting attacked similarly we can see that solar wind so this is what this is what is happening across so the point is coming to that like you know how it has happened of course the, there is a uh, we have the reconciliation there is a weaponization then delivery then like you know then then like you know executions then installation then cnc then 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 your action comes to the picture so definitely in this process somewhere that control you have to be in place so on that control we have to have certain policy and that like you know which if you talk about india definitely we have talking about moral of that uh, uh, like you know moral of the national information infrastructure protection group where the 24 by 7 they are working for that to protecting or giving the response to that but there is a policy around it also then if you talk about the national cyber security policy 2013 where where it has been already highlighted especially for the critical infrastructure to be monitored it should be response how we can take those up so but it is not that extensively mentioning for the certain like you know the group or certain like you know the business or certain kind of kind of sector but if you talk about the CISA, where we are talking about the cyber security and infrastructure security in the US, that's called CISA, where it is critical. There are 16 sectors been already party to it. So if you can see that is one of like, you know, reference for us or uh, to take it up. 
then we have in India also, of course, we have the national, uh, as I said, like national cybersecurity policy 2013. And today also we are talking about the GDPR, IT Act law, and a lot of, lot of like, you know, even the G, uh, uh, data protection law, it is coming up. It is always coming up, it is developing. And very uh, uh, recently, the data protection law has been already there at the parliament for the approval. So soon it will be uh, uh, going to be published. Specifically, if you talk about for, for the energy sector or the transmission sector, definitely there are certain framework, there are certain like, you know, uh, uh, policies or like, you know, best practices are already available. If you talk about the NIST, there are seven, six to eight. It is for the smart grid. What is the best practices we can implement? So that is there in place. And NIST SP 882, how we can manage and control, what kind of control we can put it for the control systems. That is all, all the best practices and guidelines also in place. So right. we can refer those, those guidelines, whether it is a CISA or might be NIST or might be the national security policy, what we have, cyber security policies. Those, those are the policy around uh, to ensure that, like, you know, we are into the right place and the right track to take those uh, like, you know, uh, 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 controls and implement those or enforce those into our energy sector or not only energy sector, you can take up the all critical sector, whether it is public or private, it is important for us. And, and talk, yeah, yeah, talking about that again, like, you know, if you see uh, uh, the 56 percent of like, you know, energy and utility sector reported for the attack, whether they have reported some part is not reported and some part is the cause by the data breach, not been like, you know, operationality shut down, but it data breaches happen. So, so 56 percent people have or industries or companies have already faced uh, certain issues or the compromises uh, to the cyber security attacks. So okay. that is what is moral of uh, I can tell you about and 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 moral of if you see that uh, cyber security attacks, whether it is critical infrastructure and other around like, you know, uh, six trillion dollar have been already been uh, uh, gone through the cyber crime and cyber attacks. Those are okay. the losses it is there. So as an organization, as a, a state, we need to have that right policy in place and that policy should be implemented and ground level. It's not like, you know, to have the policies and just check the mark or the compliances are be to be met only for the auditing purpose. Not that case we can talk about it. Practically, it should be implemented at the ground. However, there might be certain challenges, but if you have proper governance in structure and the controls are building up in the phase manner, I think this is not impossible because sure. you are protecting to the com uh, protecting the nations. Absolutely. Th thank you so thank much. You. I think, you know, great views and fantastic, uh, uh, you know, perspective on various industry standards which are already pre-written. You spoke about NIST, then you spoke about IT Act, you spoke about uh, some of the uh, controls, uh, cyber security controls defined by the power grid, uh, Central Electricity Authority, and then, of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, you gave very good examples on the impact uh, and uh, also what could be the specific root causes, for example, uh, RDP, a simple RDP basically was uh, you know used as a uh, channel to kind of compromise. So thank you so much. I think Amrish, you have a view. You. Uh, you know, we are running short on time. So Amrish, if you can just share about, uh, you know, maybe a 60, 70 seconds uh, view and sure. then we go to the yeah. next question. Yeah. Yeah, so aligned to what Pradita says, <clears throat> see traditionally, uh, most of the organization have invested in a lot of things on the protection part. Okay, if we talk about niche cyber security framework, it talks about identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And since they've invested a lot of uh, resources on protection, if the protection fails, they're flat because they have not thought about identify, re respond, and recover. That way, I'm saying that uh, uh, to the for the benefit of everybody, that we need to look at where are your investors are going. Where you're going to identify, protect, detect, respond, and reco recover. Make sure that you have right representation. And right technology at the right place so that even if you see if you, if you apply best of the technology uh, you may have a bad day but how quickly are standing up like your incident response your uh, those things how well rehearsed how strong they are that will prove your metal uh, that that will prove that you invest in the right technology at across the board sure thank you thank so thank much you. Really, really appreciate. And uh, uh, I'll move to my next question, and that's the last question for the for the discussion uh, of this session. And this question is essentially to Deepak. Uh, so Deepak, uh, you know, uh, 
coming from the background uh, in Microsoft, you know, just wanted to kind of get a view from your end in terms of more on the incident management uh, and also, you know, uh, the monitoring side of uh, the aspects here on the convergence piece. Uh, you know, we've seen that a uh, lot of attacks have, uh, you know, multifold impact uh, to various environments depending on their line of business. And, you know, we've also seen that, uh, uh, you know, what is really important is resilience uh, and, of course, a very strong response mechanism and just taking a cue from where Abrish let, left off. So, uh, you know, a lot of organizations today are moving towards the cloud or have already moved towards the cloud. Some of the organizations who are under the purview of heavy regulations are also contemplating to move to the cloud in terms of their core business processes. Support processes are already on the cloud, right? So just wanted to get a view in terms of, you know, uh, when you talk about adoption of cloud from a storing and accessing perspective, uh, you know, uh, especially when you look at uh, organizations which are uh, of critical, uh, you know, importance to the country, uh, you know, what are the necessary security checks? Uh, if you could just, you know, uh, throw some light on that. And then, of course, uh, we'll we'll have we have some more questions around these, so we'll kind of pick that up once we hear your initial views. Thank you, Akshay. I might be lazy because I was the last one to compile a lot of things, so it's an opportunity for me. Forgive for that, but I'm also opportunistic because I was having a leverage to listen to most of it. Akshay, you can also contribute to seeing 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 the industry perspective. I only have few viewpoints. Uh, few few are the facts which is very commonly came up. I wanted to highlight that before I get into the question. Number one is, I think the IT and OT convergence came because IT and OT journey was very different. IT is very advanced. OT is yet to come. IT is still uh, you know acknowledged by all the tech savvy things, whereas OT we are reserved by the legacy we live. IT is all about being promoting to the latest things. We talk about AI or, or doing the sensors or hybrid cloud computing. Akshay, what you asked just now compared to OT. Now, why I'm putting this comparison on this call for audience later on is not that the OT was legacy because OT was meant to be manufactured in a company in a region where I'm creating something out of a Honda car. Just taking an example or going with the country like India as a Maruti car, right? But today when I'm creating that, it is not you and me which are working. It is a humanoid, human and the, 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 the robotics which, which combine together. And that is why the OT part needs to converge. So I'm trying to establish one fact. It does not matter where we are in the cloud or how the data centric comes into. There is an IT and OT convergence needs to work together. That's point number one. The IT and OT when they converge because of the legacy, the OT has to have a segregated environment to be looked from cybersecurity perspective. That's point number two I would like to highlight because the type of challenges when we see the RPA or the robotics uh, you know, ecosystem, the manufacturing ecosystem to come to the IT, it required different level of security perspective. The third part which was most important which you asked Akshay is uh, if you really see the 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 landscape of the uh, you know cyber attacks right today the attacks are not on financial impact it is not even the impact on the brand it is not even to the impact of, of a power plant it can be an impact on to humanity so okay. if i am able to capture a power plant and i tweak a little bit of chemical instance i'm going very practical indrajit will vouch for it right that I can change a tuning of chemical, it can create a blast. It's a human impact. So what I'm trying to highlight is the, the seeing that impact, it, it, it can do a financial losses. And what I'm trying to drive is it can be a nation state threat. Right? So catering those things, the impact of what cloud companies are doing, it is, I don't want to name today how the environment, geopolitical and global aspects are going on. But you all can agree that if we get into a cloud mode, you can have a backup, disaster recovery, management planning, and most important, you can safeguard the human nature of having a critical infrastructure taken care of. What Amrish also mentioned, uh, Pradeepto highlighted about it. So first of all, we need to get into global consensus. So let's look into what is the global practices. Amrish talked about, Pradeepto spoke about it. 
it can be nist framework can it be part of the region answer is yes can we get into any of the framework which is called national cyber security framework answer is yes can we look into something called data security privacy framework for india it is good and then it is most important is should we look into critical infra as segregated as an individual opinion i would say we should look into critical infra security as a separate aspect but it has to have the topic which is called convergence as, as uh, on top of it akshay just to conclude that point that uh, let's look into as as to converge it look into the tools and technology which can be adopted cloud is the mode to get into it but that's not the only answer sure the answer is can we converge quickly into that akshay yeah i think uh, you know very valid point while you uh, you know said that cloud may not be the only answer but of course cloud is also one of the answers and while organizations really focus uh, from a business standpoint in converging it ot to kind of get the best benefit in terms of go to market and also you know kind of uh, you know uh, customer satisfaction and so on and so forth depending on what line of business they are in uh, they leave the you know uh, the rest to the cloud service provider in terms of you know making sure that all the risk the risk may be still accountable for for the organization but you know the risk is transferred in some way uh, to to the cloud service provider in terms of looking at uh, disaster recovery business continuity crisis management and so on and so forth now uh, my my point here is that uh, uh, you know let's let's take one step forward here deepak uh, and you know talk about the security operations especially the threat monitoring right and uh, when we look at threat monitoring we're seeing a huge trend of uh virtual sock we are seeing a huge trend of sock on the cloud uh so what are you a proponent of uh you know applying this same control and extending it to this convergence mechanism as well uh, if so then if you could help us with some examples of what could be some good or leading practices in this area which will kind of help our audience to also understand some of the best practices that they could apply this is great point i mean that's what i said that when we speak about cloud and representing a cloud company rather i would on this call say we are a security company uh, you know taking that privilege uh, to say that as, as a platform organization uh, for a minute i would like to park cloud and i would talk, like to talk about soc a security operation center akshay you rightly mentioned it is all about use cases so if i am securing uh, pradeep to can highlight that amrish in the jeet uh, nitin you can highlight that is if i am talking about industry then the security operations and their events is all about industry specific case scenarios that is the first thing i'll put as a benchmark not not what cloud wants to do or on premises wants to do second you cannot control any attack whether it is ransomware whether it is a malware or even a smallest attack if you do not have a holistic log analysis today when we do soc analysis it is a noise of threat intelligence which we collect whether that attack happens have you seen the the attacks which has happened like nekers virus a uh, colonial pipeline uh, ptia uh, you know amplifications if you go back and check the history where it all started it was all basics of what is today's topic called zero trust so akshay i would like to highlight that the operations of soc needs to have a, a you know regulatory compliance aspect as well through a zero trust approach everybody talked about it i would also like to put my two cents zero trust is not a technology it's not a process it's a mindset and more importantly technically it's a framework if i have to define i will define zero trust is never trust always verify inside outside i will test akshay akshay will test deepak deepak will test nitin nitil will test ambrish inside outside that's what i wanted to highlight second assume you are in the breach state that's the point number 2 of zero trust assume breach that means water flood has come i am already in the uh, you know uh, a, a droning stage what should i do that's where akshay when you said in the soc it is not about threat intel am i prepared for crisis management the point you were highlighting is a very very crisp point if i do not have a crisis management plan because i am bound to be breached sorry to say but i am bound to be breached even as microsoft do i have a crisis management plan to respond to ambrish or pradeep that within 30 seconds i am going to take care of it do i have that plan and this applies to critical infrastructure a lot that means in one hour if i have a crisis management plan maybe so likely i have impacted human life 
I might have got a disruption of one hour of electricity, but I lost, you know, the the electricity. But I was able to save the human life. That's point number two. The third part of zero trust is least privilege. Every CIO, Amrish, you can count on that, Pradeep. So I am taking your names frequently. Uh, sorry for that, and Nitin, you can highlight that as well. Indrajit is on the side of consulting, so I am not taking his name. Most of us customize our privileges. having more than what we are supposed to do and this goes as a consumer as well akshay right so i might have my mobile with my access which i am not supposed to have but i am having it so i get breached and then i tell my bank i lost my money and then bank tells me because you are not up to date i mean who is responsible for it that's why in cloud in soc what you asked i am i am giving that answer as well this is a cloud natural model called shared responsibility model what lies with you what lies with me what infrastructure software as a service or, or or cloud as a service you are having but in nutshell it is all about the the security operation center the best practices is to conclude minimum security baseline lies with the devices or the application if they are vulnerable they are bound to get attacked if it is attacked do i have a crisis management plan if the crisis management plan is there am i informing cert Akshay, what you asked earlier, right? Am I informing? I think uh, uh, Pradeep, you mentioned Pradeep. So you mentioned that, right? Am I informing? You know, critical infra or national secretariat that this is the attack has happened. Basically, the call tree. And, call uh, tree, exactly. The call tree. How do I inform the them? The components of the call tree, right, from regulatory authorities to the country uh, authority, and then of course the board. and the uh, chain of command within the organization absolutely yeah. sorry for taking that time but i i thought it was important actually no, absolutely important point you made very important uh, pradeep ji you have uh, uh, a point and amrish also has a point so yeah. maybe 15 20 seconds each yeah. would be so, have Thanks. so yeah of course what uh, mr deepak has highlighted and other panelists is already highlighted that uh, uh, today we need a effective and a smart uh, monitoring it is not the event just correlate and like you know logs are shipping and all those part it should be a sore is a framework where we can think about and we should have the lab faster mechanism the least privilege what you most people are talking about but practically it's not happening so that is where we can talk about and and the point uh, most of the cases like you know uh, uh, it, it is instead of the technology challenges most of the people challenges as well and processes challenges so that should be taken care of it and and the sore is the way forward and that intelligent way we have to respond it and every organization as a nation or as a company or organization we should have the incident response plan in place so that we know where and how and what we are going to do and when we are going to do so that should be in place and defined with the role and responsibility thank you so much thanks i think thank great so much. Thank thank great 10 seconds so the yeah. even if uh, uh, deepak said and pradeep thought said Uh, we must have a crisis management plan and incident response plan but more important is how often we are practicing it how often do cyber drill we have seen majority of the time people don't know what they are supposed to do in that crisis scenario people are running around okay so roles of responsibility if there is a practice and they are reviving and their the plan is current right that's why you see in the uh, uh, in the in the hour of crisis we say that call army right why defense forces because they are ready They, they are practicing their drill every day. They have plan A, plan B, and plan C. Okay, coming from the defense background, I can just correlate things a little better. I think uh, Indrajit sir also can uh, vouch on that. That's why you see in the crisis, everyone thought about call army, right? Call navy, air force, etc. Why? Because they practice it. But that sure. is more Thank important. Thanks. Thank you so much. And in fact, uh, I agree. Uh, today. most of the organizations uh, who are either a part of the national critical infrastructure importance or even some of the large organizations which are publicly listed have been practicing most of the war gaming exercises or simulation exercises so totally agree with your perspective absolutely and uh, one thing i would like to add here you know while we are talking about the ot and uh, everybody resonated the point of cert india and cert uh, the threat intelligence would be very important threat attribution would be very important right and uh, knowing the system or the or the vulnerabilities in the network is pretty important just to you know uh, give one point recorded future last year told that there are apts in nine of the power grids in india that was a you know kind of a really neck shaking information what they had given 
and uh, this is the time when zero trust of course is one point but threat intelligence and the cert very specific like maybe a power cert what we have we, are, we should have the fin certs which are again most vulnerable sectors uh, the other certs the thermal certs the cert india smart cities because those are also forming part of the critical infrastructure now so the the uh, the certs for the smart cities so those kind of things are the future the threat intelligence threat attribution is the most important part uh, which we need to take forward i think absolutely absolutely thank you so much for that and i think uh, uh, you know plethora of information i have learned a lot today uh, with all these uh, you know uh, esteemed panelist uh, and thank you so much uh, and you know as they say that uh, you know data is the new oil uh, and i think uh, uh, it should be uh, you know uh, where it is moving towards is uh, you know uh, how do we kind of business is going to continuously transform and it's going to uh, move into the transformation space and change is going to be the only constant that we're going to see in business from the times to come uh, we are talking about uh, our you know india's uh, economy to move to a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 uh, now, if you look at that, uh, how many more new organizations are going to come into place? Uh, we are looking at 200 odd unicorns basically getting uh, established uh, in the next one or two years. Uh, you know, apart from the ones which are already there, we are looking at organizations. Uh, we spoke about micro segmentation. That's a big, big area which is essentially coming up. And it's not only in the country, but globally as well. We've been seeing a huge trend. Uh, we've seen, we are also seeing a trend in the biomedical space and we spoke about uh, touching the human element of course uh, one was about uh, an example that was given was uh, on you know uh, how you could impact the human life by making some changes to the power grid uh, you can the, there have been examples where you know uh, you know uh, large critical surgeries have been averted because of biomedical devices being hacked into right uh, so various aspects and i think as we move forward uh, you know cyber security essentially has become a part of uh, the top 3 risk in a board conversation and i won't be surprised if it becomes the top risk very soon uh, with that uh, you know uh, i would like to thank the panelists for sharing wonderful absolutely wonderful insightful views uh, you know and i'm sure uh, the you know audience essentially would also be uh, beneficial uh, in terms of what they've heard from the panelists today uh, thank you so much uh, for being a part of the panel and uh, uh, thank you for your patience uh, answering all the questions that I posted. So thank you once again. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.